How's your morning. fund? Thanks for How's your me. fund done? Uh, the fund has done uh, fine. Uh, it, it had the uh, correction uh, along with the market uh, that was right after Chinese New Year. Uh, but as you as as we got the results coming through, these are the company's results coming through uh, in the latter part of uh, March and in April. Uh, performance has been good because the market has uh, returned to fundamentals and some of the earnings uh, have confirmed the growth uh, at, well so far in the first quarter of this year and it is in line to meet the expectation for the rest of the year. Uh, so the correction was a healthy one and it was welcome given how sharp it has uh, risen in January. Um, and then the market has come back to fundamentals, which was a, a good thing to have. Uh, you want markets to be you know, heavily uh, uh, traded on fundamentals uh, rather than sentiment. Right, and, and when do you think uh, this sort of foggy sentiment goes away? Uh, the, the sentiment should, you know, well, in between the results, there, there could always be a sentiment that, that might might be negative mm. uh, and, and there's this, still, this rotation that is still in place. I mean, however, I think the, as uh, companies announce the first quarter results, I think that is going to be positive uh, in, in terms of uh, getting uh, the markets to refocus on you know the earnings growth, uh, the fundamentals, which by and large uh, have been relatively fine uh, and very much in line uh, with uh, market expectation and our expectation. But of course, you can argue that uh, a year ago we had a relatively lower base, so the first quarter might be easier to beat, and the second quarter will be the one to watch. Uh, but so far, coming from uh, talking to companies and 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 uh, the sort of announcement and the sort of commentary from the companies have been relatively positive. Um, so yeah, there will always be sentiment uh, with this rotation uh, very much in the play. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, I think market will re revert back to fundamental, which is good. Yeah. Your, your biggest sector allocation, consumer staples. Uh, and for those, of course, who follow Chinese markets, know exactly what, what names go into, uh, into that group. I'm curious, how have you managed your exposure there? Because it hasn't, been, it hasn't been a good two months. Let's put it that way. Oh, yeah, because the, uh, if you look at the consumer stocks, uh, consumer sector, they were doing very well last year, and they were the first to face the, the brunt of the sell-off and the correction. Um, Valuation-wise, was uh, a little bit on the stretch side, but after the correction, I think it, it has become a lot, a lot more healthier. And I think mean, we are looking at the consumer sector for the long term. It's not just, you know, for this year or next year, but over the long term, we still believe that the fundamentals, uh, drivers of consumer uh, or consumption in China is still very much intact. Uh, the, the generation of uh, you know millennials spending and spending on higher quality products is still here to stay. So we believe that this is a long term positioning that we have, rather than something that is uh, based on one year or based on uh, it, uh, based on a very short term horizon. And the way that we position ourselves is is a, is a collection of you know it can be beverages, it can be uh, condiments, it can be you know the car makers, auto parts makers. Uh, it, it could be in the new energy area as well, uh, and could be could be batteries uh, suppliers. So we are playing, uh, you know, the domestic consumption story uh, across a wide variety of uh, of names and se and sectors. I think that is uh, something that uh, we prefer to do it uh, in a in a more you know conservative and more defensive way. And these companies are all what we call high quality companies, uh, leaders in their sectors. Right. And when you say leaders, I guess not to give away your secret and your secret sauce, <laughs> you know, everyone talks about the Chinese consumption, right? Everyone talks about healthcare. Everyone talks about 5G, cloud, and all these things. Soy sauce, as you, you, know, you, you brought that up. <laughs> what metrics do you use to determine who the market leader is? Let's put it that way. Oh, we look at the, of course, we look at the business model, the business mode, the competitive mode. Uh, where does the source of the competitive competitive mode comes from and what's the evidence for that if you look at the market share of these companies whether they have a big market share and the kind of margins that they, they command especially in times where you know commodity prices are going up are they able to pass the price or pass the, the import uh, sorry input cost on to their customers so if they're able to do that it shows a lot about their bargaining power and which is why I think we look at some of this evidence 
to ascertain that they are the leaders uh, in their respective sectors. Um, and 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 then this is where I think we continue to be confident in the recovery. The quality companies, the leaders, should recover first. And these are the ones that have a better visibility, and which is the reason why we have uh, basically uh, stuck to most of these companies. And we'll continue to look for new ones as well uh, in the in the respective uh, consumer space.